So this is the uh, Starlink personal locator beacon made by ACR Electronics. Uh, something I've always wanted. It's designed to uh, summon help if you really get yourself in some serious shit. Um, it's like out hiking or camping and you injure yourself and there's really no way for you to get back. The idea is you, you release this tab here and this unfolds an antenna which then swings up out of the way and then you press and hold this button for a few seconds and that triggers a unit to send off a signal to a series of orbiting satellites that receive on 4 or 6 megahertz and it broadcasts the GPS position from a receiver that's down in here and then uh, when the emergency services manage to get close to you there's a second beacon it sends out on a different frequency that they can track you within the next few miles but typically the GPS is designed to get them quite close to you there's versions of this made also for uh, for sea use. This one's not does not float, so it's something you can only use on land unless you had some kind of flotation jacket. I've always wanted one, but they're they're quite expensive devices, and we're telling for about three or four hundred dollars. So I found this one used on eBay and got a really good price on it. The only problem is that the batteries have expired last month, so that got me to wondering um, if I could actually replace the unit, you know, my, if I could replace the batteries myself. So I opened it up, and I've already removed it, but inside I found these actual cells. And when I dismantled them, I discovered that they were actually just a series of CR123A batteries, which are uh, lithium, lithium cells that are typically used like in photography applications. They're 3 volts each, so this makes a 6-volt pack. Two packs produce a 12 Volt, uh, overall system voltage and the design is squeezed in down here like this. Um, I was able to to purchase some uh, replacement cells and here's the first pack that I made to go inside it. Um, just about to and my second one. Uh, it requires a little bit of work. There's tabs that you have to solder to up here and some spacer. The, the tricky one is soldering these two cells together. But to make this work you actually have to have cells that have, have have tabs that are welded onto them like like this one has. Um, you can't just solder directly to the cell because that's going to overheat it. So I was able to purchase these cells from Interstate Batteries that uh, that have the tabs on them. Here's the batteries right here. I'm going to open up the next set so I can make my my second battery pack. There you go, that's a typical typical cell with welded tabs on it. These cost about uh, four or five bucks a piece, I think. So all told, I'm going to be in for about um, maybe $45 when I get this whole thing done. I'm going to reclaim the the, uh, the wires off the existing battery packs like I did for this one. So let's get started with that. So here's the assembled unit. I got the cell solder back in place. And it manages to squeeze down inside the space for it, as far as I can tell. We'll go ahead and try the self-test here. Okay, looks good. Excellent. I think we have successfully repaired the unit. Well, I spoke too soon. Turns out the extra thickness from shrink wrapping these battery packs made it difficult and not impossible to get the rear case back on the thing. So I've cut that off and we'll just consider that to be a, a slight fail and uh, we'll put the battery back in again. And now let's see if we can get the the cover on successfully. Okay, looks like that works much better. So anyway, lesson lesson learned.